Kelly Williams with The Kelly Williams Show and Your Home TV. And it's time for The Kelly Williams Show. All right. Yeah, all right, all right. I am very excited. I am going to be visiting with Dave Alexander of Serve the Border. Hey, Dave. Hi, how are you doing? Good. I'm excited. So stay tuned. Grab your coffee. Grab your mimosa. We're going to be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's time to tune in and turn on your happy. You're watching The Kelly Williams Show. Don't forget, you can watch it anytime on the best network ever, Your Home TV. And you can also stream it live on Roku. So get ready, because it's time for The Kelly Williams Show. All right, guys, we are back right here on The Kelly Williams Show, and I'm so excited because today I've got Dave Alexander with Serve the Border. Hey, Dave. How are you doing? Good. Good I'm to be really here. excited. I'm so excited to have you today. We have a mutual friend, Jennifer Moran, yes. that introduced us, and uh, she was really excited for me to interview you. And, and after I got the information about you, I can't wait for people to hear about what you do Thank and you. about this organization. This is amazing, guys. So, Dave, first of all, tell me, where are you from? I'm from San Antonio. Nice. San Antonio, Texas. In fact, your friend Jennifer and I went to high school together. We went I to college that. together. Love and that. And coincidentally, she ended up introducing us. Yeah, I love that. That's amazing. Okay, so before we get into what Serve the Border is, what were you doing before you got involved with this organization? Well, I still am. I'm a general contractor. <gasps> nice. Yeah, this is, this okay. Is side gig passion. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So you, what do you build? Residential. It's all nice. mostly rehab. Mm. Stuff. Yeah. I love that. So we are talking about the organization Serve the Border. Yes, ma'am. What is it? Well, we provide meals and a lot of love and a lot of support for all our law enforcement guys down at the border. I love that. Back in uh, 22, uh, my partner in this bill got a phone call from some DPS guys in Austin and said, Hey, we've got guys sleeping in their Tahoes on the border because we can't get a hotel room. Wow. Every room was rented out yeah. by the federal government to house people coming across the border. Wow. It was during the, the Haitian invasion in Del Rio. There's yeah. 15,000 people under the bridge. Wow, So yes. they said, hey, can you go feed them? And Bill and I have been feeding people for different disasters yeah. for years. Oh, I love that. And um, so we loaded up and went down there and and fed, I don't know how many hundred and hundreds of people. Oh, my goodness. 200 pounds of catfish, I mean, and, Yum. and fries. And we, we fed yeah. everything. Yeah. I, brisket and that kind of stuff. I so love it, that. it's gone on from there and wow. grown into what it is now and just keeping it rolling. Yeah. So, how did, so is that how Serve the Border started? Or, That's how or, Serve the Border started wow. with saying, hey, come on down here. And it was just Bill, my son Connor, and oh I goodness. took off from various locations. Bill's in Temple. Um, I'm in Huntsville. So, we just headed down there to Del Rio and, and that's what began it. Amazing. And we started going back and just this year, we became a 501c3, which was love that. which was a bear, but we got yeah, it. It was done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. When you Do you remember what it was like your very first time down there at the border? I do. Um, like I said, there were no hotel rooms, so we were sleeping in wow. our trucks as well. Wow. So we were down there for three days and just cooking and cooking and not not a chance to shower until we got home. Yeah. So that was nice to get back <laughs> yeah. and, and get it done. Um, it, it was a bit overwhelming when you went down there and saw all of those people yeah. Under that bridge, yeah, and suddenly they disappeared on the on the way. It was odd because I was heading out down Highway ninety, and between Uvalde and Del Rio, yeah. And if I saw one white Greyhound bus heading east, yeah, I saw a hundred. They're brand new Greyhounds, wow. And they were just loading these guys up on buses and shipping yeah. them all over the United States. Which, yeah, that's still going on today. Yeah, it's not just on buses; they're flying them out now. Yeah, um, and it's not just the people from Haiti. Yeah, so it's it's. <clears throat> Pretty enlightening to have your eyeballs on it. What you see on the news is not what's yeah. really going on down there. Yeah, absolutely. Do you remember probably how grateful these border security guys were oh. to have y'all down there cooking them some home-cooked meals yeah. and feeding them? Because well, I can't even imagine what their ske- – I mean, do they even – have major schedules. I mean, how, oh, yeah. how does that work? They're working 12-hour shifts and wow. busting it. For, and it's not just Border Patrol guys. It's yeah. DPS, state mm. troopers, National Guard, uh, law enforcement agencies, agencies from not only across the state of Texas, mm. but from out, throughout the country wow. are here yeah. protecting the border. Yeah. 
Um, it's changed up a lot since February when the governor shut down yeah. Shelby Park. We can yeah. get into that later. Um, but they're from all over the place. So the, the gratitude is great. And get, getting into that group of people to feed them was kind of complicated because let's face it, they're law enforcement officers. They're not just going to eat something that somebody oh, gives them. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we had to get some blessings from a lot of people yeah. to, to get that. So they don't know who we are now. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> and sure. And they're happy with the food. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So how often since 2022 do y'all go down? We try to get down there three to four times a year. Wow. Um, yeah, because it's a long haul. It's, it's kind of a big production. Oh, yeah. Um, we're currently working on building out a uh, mobile kitchen. <gasps> so instead of that. just loading everybody up in the pickups and trailers yeah. and stuff, it'll be hook on and go. Oh, oh so that's I That's going to be our big fundraiser for uh, 2025. Oh, that's try wonderful. To get funding for that. Yeah. How many, uh, during each visit, how many people are you finding that y'all are feeding? How many do you have to prepare for? Well, um, in February, we fed 4,650 meals. Um, 4,650? We did. Um, Holy smoke. That was that was between Border Patrol and DPS and local wow. law firm guys. Del Rio sector has 1,900, in February, had 1,925 yeah. Border Patrol agents. Wow. That's just Border Patrol. Yeah. There's roughly 20,000 nationally. So they've got 10% of them right there in Del Rio. Yeah. Um, so the goal was set to feed all of those guys yeah. in all of their, I think, nine branches that they have out of that, that sector. Amazing. So we're running food out everywhere. Oh, my goodness. Does it does it change what y'all take down there and cook? Or is it kind of it consistent? Depends. It depends on the year? It part depends, of the year? It depends on what we bring. What's available? I mean, yeah. Like, you know, on the first trip, we had Vernon's Country Catfish out of Conroe, Texas. Yeah. Thank you, Vernon's. Wow. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, thank you. They donated 200 pounds of catfish. Holy smokes. To it, just right out of the freezer. Here you go. Take it and feed these guys. Wow. And, you know, stuff like that. Well, by God, we're cooking fish that day, you know? Yeah. And other times, we'll we'll get donations from different butcher shops. We'll be pulled pork, pork shoulders. We'll do... Oh, I love that. I mean, we did, I think, seven or 800 pounds of pork shoulders, oh 500 goodness. pounds of chicken breast on that trip. Wow. And, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of food, and the equipment to cook it yeah. is uh, kind of hard to coordinate oh. and get, get down there. Oh, I'm sure. And lots of volunteers. Oh, incredible. And we're going to talk about volunteers in yeah. just a minute. I want to ask you, when you were, when y'all first went down here on your very first trip, what were you, what did you say to each other okay what are we taking how are we going to get all this food who do we start asking for help see, what do you what see do you the do? pants there were three people my son connor and bill and i yeah that went down there and we started talking on the phone on the way down to different people say hey yeah. can, you, can you come to del rio and wow. help us and we there weren't a lot of people down there helping us on that first trip yeah but now that's changed there's a yeah. lot more People. Oh, that's so good. A lot of people. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, what is a what is a, a, a one trip look like? How many days do you stay? Two to three days. Okay. Yeah, we try to do it on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, oh, yeah, that's and then nice. head back home on a Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, guys, I am right here with Dave Alexander of Serve the Border, and we are talking about everything incredible that they are doing to provide food and meals and things for the people who um, secure our border. So we're going to be right back with more after this commercial break. Unwind by the water at South Shore Harbor Resort, the premier waterfront getaway located just south of Houston. We are the ultimate getaway with a range of activities for all ages. Soak up the sun by our refreshing pool or spend a day on the water. Pamper yourself at the relaxing spa and savor delicious cuisine at our on-site restaurants. Book your stay now and enjoy a rejuvenating vacation experience. South Shore Harbor Resort and Conference Center. It's time to enjoy. All right, so we are back right here on the Kelly Weems Show. We are talking with Dave Alexander with Serve the Border. Dave, this is an amazing conversation, and I, I don't even know how many people know that y'all are doing this. This is really amazing what you're doing. Um, I want to ask you, has there ever been any circumstances when you've been planning to head out that, that has caused y'all not to be able to go and feed the the Fortunately, no. Um, Wonderful. We were able to go every time. We bring a lot of local law enforcement from our areas with us. Oh, great. Um, Congressman Luttrell has been down there Wonderful. with us. And Morgan's very supportive. He, of course, yeah. he sits on Homeland. Yeah. So um, he's very involved in it. Yeah. And working on some good legislation right now to oh, solve some of these problems. Yeah. Um, but no, we, we bring... Uh, 
a lot of college students that get community service hours for coming down. Love that. And uh, local law enforcement volunteers, other community leaders. Yeah. And people are excited to go down there. Everybody I talk to was like, I want to go. I want to come. I was yeah. like, I'm going to put an apron on you. Absolutely. And you're going to be rolling up tacos. Oh, In I fact, love that. I've got a gift for you, Kelly. Uh oh. Apron. I want to see. <gasps> what? You get your very own serve the board oh, apron. Nice. Look at that. Oh, uh, look. I'm going to have to go down there with you. You're welcome to. And serve. Look at this, we'll, we'll put guys. You to work. Oh, this. I'm official. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, we I'm wearing it. Genuine for the show. <laughs> this is uh, this is very cool. I love it. I love it. All right, thank you, Dave. I am so proud. Yes, yeah, so we have people from everywhere wanting to come mm -hmm. down there, and, and not to just help and show some love to these guys that yeah. need it. I mean, the morale among law enforcement down there is horrible. Yeah. Because here's your job. Your job is to protect the border. Mm -hmm. But but don't do your job. Is what mm -hmm. they're being told. There exactly. was a period of time in January and February where there was literally nobody in Del Rio sector patrolling the border. They were all in the, in the processing centers processing people that are going to be cut loose in the United States. So, I mean, straight yeah. up, there was nobody patrolling. No, it's, um, it's really heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, you know, talking about volunteers, and um, I, I know that there's going to be thousands and thousands of people that get to see this show, and, and there's going to be people that want to volunteer. Where do you get your volunteers? Right now, just, this is primarily Stan Houston State University. I love that. Um, which is a very heavy law enforcement school. Yes. We've got a great CJR program. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and it's in their fraternity kids. I mean, Bill yeah. and I are both in fraternities, and we bring them down there, and uh, they're excited to do it. They they get the community service hours, but they also get to meet a lot of people in law enforcement. Yeah, I And with love that, that university being mm -hmm. so involved in criminal justice, yes. they get to wow. meet some people they could potentially go to work with later on in life. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. Do, do any of your volunteers have to have anything signed before they go down? Signed by? I, I don't know. Like law for, law enforcement or anything? I mean, do, do, I mean no. I don't know. I just want to yeah, ask I mean, questions that people we're may We're not going to just bring anybody down there. We're going to have to vet them somehow. <laughs> You know, I might have to have something signed if you bring me then. Bobby. Yeah, yeah, we might have to get a little background <laughs> check on you. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, I love that. I love that. So, um, we're going to talk about how you can volunteer in in just a little bit in the show, and we're going to give you all of that information. Okay, so, Dave, when you are when you are planning your your trips. Who do you start calling for food donations or monetary donations? Where do you get those from? Food donations, they come from a variety of places. Local restaurants, yep. um, local grocers who oh, say, I love that. look, I've got you know, 300 pounds of chicken that's going to be out of date in a week. That's no problem. We're, oh. we're leaving Thursday. Oh, I love so that. So we'll get donations from them. Local butchers. Um, Bill has a, a butcher shop up in Temple yeah. that has been very generous to us, and they're always donating food. I love um, that. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty good. And then, and then you'll have people go out and buy. We had a guy up in, in Conroe go out and buy 500 pounds of chicken breast yeah. and uh, donated it to us. So we took it down oh, there and, and cooked it all. I love um, that. Monetary donations, they're growing and they can yeah. always grow more. Um, a lot of this comes out of your back pocket. Yeah. You know, it has been for Bill and I. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we would take those monetary donations and go out and buy what we didn't have. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't have sauce or something or if we didn't have yeah. the styrofoam clam shells, we would yeah. go buy all that. Yeah. Load it up and haul down there. Oh, I love that. Is there any food you, you don't ever take down? Is there things you can't take down? Or really, is it almost anything? Sushi. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, we might need someone I had done. I, I'm good with that. Uh, I love it. But Okay, but so no, sustainable. It's totally sustainable. You know, okay. we, we bring cold storage with us. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, we, we have enough cold storage to carry all of that at one time. Oh, I love down there. that. So, yeah. We're, we're fine on keeping things cold. And if we don't have enough... Cold storage, we have dry ice. Yeah. And keep things frozen up until we're ready to cook it. So, no, we don't really have to worry about spoilage that much. Oh, that's good. It's just about getting it out and, and, and efficiently. And it's growing. Yeah. Uh, it's The first couple of times we did it was a catastrophe because yeah. the, the logistics of sending yeah. food out to that many people is... I can't yeah. even imagine. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's getting better. Yeah. Do you remember thinking, I don't... Wait a minute. I don't... <laughs> are we really ready to do this? Yeah. Because that's a little scary. You yeah. get down there and go, these people are relying on us. And I okay, hang on. We're all we're all figuring this out as exactly, we go. Exactly. You know, yeah, um, we've kind of got it down now. I love, yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, okay, so do you know how many meals since twenty twenty two you have served? Almost twelve thousand. Yeah. Wow. 
almost 12,000. Oh my goodness, that's awesome as heck. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, that's a whole lot. It's a lot of food. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a PBJ, and it's not a burger. No. I and mean, we've yeah. done a lot of burgers. But, oh, yeah. Um, but it's always something really good. I mean, yeah. it's not going to be oh, just no. it's... something to get in your belly. It's going to be something great. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Um, how many meals a day do y'all serve them when you're down there? Is it like one a day? One well, of their meals no, a day? No, I mean, the trip in February, we did three squares <gasps> for wow for one whole day, oh my and then the goodness. rest of it. That's why it got to such a big number. Oh, I love and, that. And then we did the rest. You know, the rest of the time we did mm-hmm. lunch and a, a dinner, or a breakfast, and a lunch. I love that. There's nothing for us to go down and roll up three thousand yeah. breakfast tacos. I mean, no, yeah. I make mean, yummy. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Do you think that y'all are able to take, is canned food or things like that something you can take? Or is it always, you know, it's if somebody said in vegetables, food. okay, I mean, can anybody send vegetables like fresh green beans or peppers or are there if, things like that? If somebody in like the that? produce business wants to send us a couple cases of peppers or a okay. couple cases of onions or, okay. or, or let us line it up where we can pick it up before the next trip, yes. that's great. Yes, I mean, all that's very, very important to us. We need to buy it anyway. Yeah. And if they're donating it, great. But the most important thing is that it's fresh. Oh, no, that's and, wonderful. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, so that's but, good to know. Yeah, but we really don't do... I mean, everything's made from scratch. It's yeah. all good quality, scratch-made yeah. food. And oh, that's, that's that. what makes them happy. Oh, no. That made me happy. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys. We are talking with Dave Alexander of Serve the Border and all the amazing things they're doing. And... How cute is my apron? I'm official. I'm official. <laughs> we are going to be back with more information on this incredible organization and how they are changing the world one meal at a time right after this commercial break. Serendipity Yacht Cruises and Events wants you to come party with us. We're bringing the fun to the Houston Bay Area. Stay tuned for all of our incredible events throughout the year, featuring amazing food and drinks, live entertainment, special guests, and so much more. Fun. New, different, Serendipity Yacht Cruises and Events is where you want to be. So come party with us. It's more than a yacht. It's Serendipity. We are back, guys. I have been with Dave Alexander of Serve the Border Organization. And wow, 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 what an amazing thing you and your volunteers are doing. So I I, want to ask you this. You know, the reality is you are three to four times a year down taking food to, to all of these people who are protecting our border and serving and, yes. and selfishly, of course. Um, you are seeing what's happening on at the border in real time. Yes. Can you give us a little bit of information about what you are seeing and what is happening? Okay. Um, in 22, when the, the first big wave started, I mean, it, it yeah. started happening couple years before that yeah a year before that i believe and the first big wave came in in del rio mm-hmm. with the haitians and then since then it's got exponentially worse since then actually since mm-hmm. 21 there's been roughly nine million documented illegal crossings in the united states yeah these are people documented that documented illegal crossings and not not coming through a point of point of entry yeah but they're coming illegally across the border yeah about nine million. Yeah, they're estimating that. In addition to that, there's 1.8 million gotaways, which means they don't. They never saw them. They never wow. had any interaction with them. They just came in and slipped on through and got away. Wow. So uh, the numbers are staggering. Yeah. Uh, what's happening is, as I was mentioning earlier, where the agents are actually having to process. Back in February, Governor Abbott here in Texas shut down Shelby Park, which is in Eagle Pass. Okay. And at that at that time, there were roughly five thousand illegal crossings a day. Oh, oh my goodness! A day. A day. A day. And after he shut down Shelby Park, um, which I've I've sent you pictures of, uh, which is amazing, but yeah. uh, it got down to three or four people a day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a ghost town, and you'll like I said, I sent you photographs. Yeah. Of it. Amazing. It was a complete ghost town. It was covered with state guard guys and DPS troopers and airboats. Yeah. And all this. So what happened is that that was like the go-to place, which is a rock throw from the legal point of entry in wow. Eagle Pass, BH Negers. Yeah. So from then, they started going down the river a little bit towards Laredo sector yeah. and up the river a little bit towards uh, El Paso. Yeah. And since then, they've gone all the way out to Arizona and California yeah. and boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So it, it, it really didn't cut down on the number of people in our country illegally yeah. every month. Yeah. It just moved them. It mo- yes. Okay. Um, 
Also since then, there's been a new program which has been out for a couple years called CBP-1, Custom Border Patrol 1, which is an app that you can be literally anywhere in the world. And let's say you, you could be in the Congo in Africa. Yeah. And pull up the CBP-1 app and say, I seek asylum in the United States. And I'm setting an appointment on my phone to come across the bridge in Harlingen or you know, wherever in the United States. And here's my appointment time. And you come across the bridge, you show them your CBP-1 app. What? And you're cut loose with a parole in place, which means that they're allowed to parole waiting for their immigration hearing yeah. in the United States. Oh. They're not sent back to the country from which they entered or their country of origin. They parole in the United States. Yeah. And you hear about this a little bit on the media yeah. about what's that going on, but it's a huge number of people. And uh, it, it's bad. But the worst part about it, and this is something that we really do need to fix with our immigration laws, they're setting court dates right now for 2033. If somebody gets paroled in place yeah. from wherever in the United <laughs> States to use that app to come to the United States, they're going to uh, court date of 2033. That's nine years out. You see, it it literally makes no sense. Yeah, and there's roughly 11 to 12 million people. Well, there's 9 million people that are documented in front of them. Yeah. Who are unlikely to ever show up to no. that court hearing anyway. No. They're given a phone. They're given some cash. And in most cases, they're given a, a plane ride or a train ride or a bus yeah. ride to wherever they want to go in the country. Yeah. And say, use this phone to call us for your court date and stay in touch yeah. with us. Yeah. It's just... It, it, it's a mess. Yeah. It's a real mess. Um, in addition to the CBP-1 app, they're also flying a lot of people in from other countries. The United States government into about 50 airports in the United States. Miami's the biggest one. Um, wow. About where most of them are coming in. There's uh, about 400,000 of those who have been flown in on the U.S. dollar. Yeah. To we're, U.S. We're all cities. paying for this. We're all paying for this. Yeah. Um, it, it's very frustrating. Amazing. And you're not going to see, you're not going to hear about this or see it on the mainstream media. You, it's just not advertised, but yeah. that's what's really going on. Yeah. I mean, I talk to these people every day. Yeah. Down there working on the border. Yeah. And it, it, it's sad. It it's is sad, sad that their, their morale's down because they can't do their job. Yeah. And we're being affected as Americans. Look at all the crimes that have happened. Yeah. Look at the, the murders. Yeah. And it, it, it's a mess. Yeah. And, uh, are, Hopefully it gets fixed soon. Are you, what are you finding that has become, when you're down there with these, with these agents um, from all over the country, what are you finding that is, has been their biggest concern and their um, disappointment, you think, to them that they're every day? Well, with the federal agents, it's, uh, it's the thing I spoke about earlier about your job is to do this, yeah. but don't do your job. Yeah. I mean, they signed up to become a, a border patrol agent to patrol the border. Yeah. And exactly. And right now, they're they're not allowed to enforce the laws. Yeah. They they went off to the border patrol's Fletzi, which is a federal law enforcement training center. They've got their own, and I think it's Nartesia, New Mexico. They didn't spend the six months there learning how to be an agent to go out and not be an agent. No. So the, the, it's it's a morale buster. Yeah. And. And it's, it's sad to see. And that's that's really what drives us to do what we do, is go down and show them some love. Turn uh, your arm around them, grab a guitar. Absolutely. I mean, just do something to, to keep them pumped up a little bit. Absolutely. And we've got all their families. I mean, they bring the kids out to these oh, things. Oh, I it's great. love that. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm, I'm thinking, you know, hearing you talk about the amazing work that y'all are doing. People just want to be, people want to be, know that they're supported and yeah. they're loved and they're look we're here for you and we we you know we're pulling for you yeah. and and we support you and what you're doing even though it may look like so many people aren't yeah well, you know and that's tough and th and this is our, i guess our little way of doing that yeah Just i love that some love. yeah absolutely well you're definitely doing that yeah. um when is your next trip uh we're planning a trip in november we're trying to do it we're trying to do it at the end of october but I don't think Bill's schedule. Or one of us, one of us isn't going to be able to go. Yeah, and we're not sending the boys down there by themselves. No, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so I think we're going to try to get it in November. I have to have one more before the end of the year just to be sure. happy with myself. To say did it. I know. Yeah. Absolutely. Will it be kind of a Thanksgiving thing? It time? most likely will be mid before yeah. before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. We might even, uh, might even do turkey. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever. Um, we <clears throat> we're. What different states have you met people from that are down there? Oh, they're from all over the place. There's a lot of Canadian guys 
because you know, obviously we have a board up there too. But a lot of those guys have yeah, come down for temporary goodness. temporary duty wow. to work on the southern board. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that. Okay, so I, w- I want to ask you this. What do you think has been the best part about being with Serve the Border, starting this organization? The, the appreciation. Yeah. I mean, seeing the looks on their faces, they're like, I can't really believe you guys are doing this. Yeah. Because you know, they're not used to that. No, no, you amazing. Know, somebody go down with a bag of chips and a case of water or a pallet of water yeah. and think it's a big deal. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the, the genuine appreciation for a good quality meal. Yeah. When you're out there running around. I uh, and, love that. I love what y'all are doing. Thanks. Okay, so we we want to tell people, how can people donate money to help you buy food? How can they volunteer if they want to? You can all do it through our website. Okay. Servetheborder.org. Okay. Um, we have a Facebook presence, Serve the Border. Uh, follow us on Facebook because that builds up the numbers and helps with yeah. the algorithms and all that stuff. So, yeah. so just looking at it, follow us, and you'll keep be able to keep up to date with what we're doing. Um, on our homepage, there's a big button that says donate. Do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We need it. And monetary yeah. donations are probably the best way to handle this yeah. because there, there will be people in other parts of the country getting us a case of jalapenos or yeah. or some steaks or something is going to be difficult to do. Yeah. Um, We've got accounts with you know Benny Keith and, and Sam's and all this stuff, so yeah. we can buy the food and kind of cater to what we're doing that time. Oh yeah, that's um, great. And plus, we need it to finish building this kitchen. So, exactly, um, exactly. What's your, yeah. what's your goal to finish building the kitchen? Dollar goal? Yes, seventy five, seventy five thousand. Okay, so yeah. Um, yeah. have you? And we're got, doing it. We're doing it. Our, instead of going out and buying one for two hundred, we're yeah. actually doing it. Oh no, we're that's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Equipment and trailers. So. Oh no, I love that. Yeah. Um, what would you? What is one thing you would tell people? Um, if they've, you know, never heard of Serve the Border or if they never had any idea that there was a group doing this, what is one thing that you would want to make sure they know? Oh, gosh. Um, do some research on what's going on. Yeah. Instead of just flicking on the TV and accepting what you're told on the television because it, it's either inaccurate or it, it, there's information missing and they're not telling you what's really going down yeah. on, on the border. It's just, it's a, it's a shame, but that's the fact. Yeah, people don't know. I uh, I was on a, a shuttle from uh, from the hotel to the airport in St. Louis over the weekend, and there was a couple sitting next to me, and I was wearing one of our shirts. Yeah, and this guy says, well, "What what is serve the border?" Yeah, and I started telling him what we do, and they're from California. Yeah, they're on a plane to go back home. Wow, and I started telling them what we do, and they're like, "We didn't have any idea about any of that." Like, you like, like about any of them? No, no. no, we have no clue what? about what's really going on. They had no idea about all the numbers of people coming across. And and that's what I'm saying. Do some research. Oh, my goodness. And, and find out what's really going on. Wow. And then, then you'll have a better understanding of what we need to do to fix it. Yeah. Would, when people follow you on, on especially your Facebook page, um, what, what kind of information do you post? What, what are they, what are they going to be able to Mainly see? Mainly events, photographs, what okay. we're cooking, that kind of yes, thing. Yes, I love that. Um, we're obviously going to post this on our page. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, this is really wonderful. Dave, thank yes. you Thank you so much so for having me. Much for being on the show today and sharing this amazing thing that, that you and the volunteers are doing with Serve the Border. This is incredible, guys. Um, please go follow them, donate, call about volunteering, look them up, servetheborder.org. Yes, ma'am. And you can follow them on Facebook. What an amazing group of people making a difference every day. This is incredible. Guys, you can watch the Kelly Weems show anytime on the Your Home TV Network, and we hope you have an awesome and blessed rest of your day. Thank you so much.